The Canon 800mm F11 IS STM. What exactly were you expecting with this lens? A few weeks ago, I was able to test this lens out in the real world, along with the Canon R5, to see how good this lens can be in daylight conditions. So I've had this lens about six or seven months already. Uh, the first time recently that I've managed to get outside and actually use this lens in the real world situation, um, shooting wildlife, birds in flight, etc. Uh, which I think this is what this lens is really designed for. Um, I don't think it's really useful for anything else. Um, I mean, you can use it for other things, but it's really, it's, to me, it's really intended for that enthusiast level wildlife uh, bird photographer who wants something that's light, portable and reasonably inexpensive. Uh, so I took this out into the real world and I was, I was reasonably surprised about how decent this lens is. Uh, it's also a lot of fun to use uh, and to be able to walk around with a lens that's capable of shooting 800 millimeter focal length it is pretty amazing. I mean, I mean it's still pretty big. It's it's going to catch the eye. I mean, passers-by, onlookers will be looking at you thinking, what, what are you doing with such a massive lens? Um, but uh, it's something you're going to have to live with. Uh, still not uh, quite as conspicuous as, as carrying around one of the really big white lenses that, that Canon produces. I quite enjoyed using it, actually. I mean, when paired with the R6 and the R5, I think I used the R5 mostly. Uh, you really need to have um, very, very good ISO performance on your camera. The R6 and the R5 uh, do, do handle ISO values uh, pretty well. The R6 probably slightly better because it's, it's a, a 20 megapixel camera as opposed to 45 megapixel. Uh, with the R5, you have obviously with 45 megapixels, you have the ability to crop in even further. If you feel that 800 millimeters isn't, you know, isn't enough, you can, you can crop even further onto your subject. There's also teleconverters. I have the 1.4 times teleconverter, which I actually used. So you're actually going from f11 up to f16 with a 1.4 times teleconverter. Uh, so that means that your ISO values need to be probably even higher, or you have to reduce your shutter speed, whichever option is suitable for your situation. Even in broad daylight, I found that I was shooting extremely high ISO. Uh, so you're probably looking at 3200 to 6400 ISO. So you need a camera that handles those high ISO values uh, well, which I think the, the R6 and the R5 do do that quite, quite well, to be perfectly honest. Um, but I don't think you really want to go any higher than 6400 uh, if you, know, you really want to have a clean image. Because F11, you can't change that. The only thing you can change is your shutter speed and your ISO. So you need to maintain a reasonably high shutter speed in order to capture fast moving subjects. So you're going to have to ramp up the ISO. Um, I don't think, personally, I wouldn't want to go any higher than 6400 ISO on either the R6 or the R5. Um, I think that's probably adequate in, in uh, most shooting conditions. Um, you're going to be using this mostly in broad daylight anyway. It's not a low light lens. If you want to do low light photography and get great results, then you're going to have to pay the money and buy one of the really, really big, white, expensive lenses. And you're going to have to do some push-ups or something to get the strength to be able to carry that thing around. Quite a unique lens, the fact that there's nothing really on the market at the moment that uh, with this uh, sort of size, weight, price range, portability. So as a lens that is kind of, you know, reasonably inexpensive, ultra lightweight, portable. Um, I was actually quite surprised with some of the results I was getting with this, and it's actually quite a lot of fun to use. So uh, let's see how we got on.